Welcome back to part two of our video series where we are creating an advertisement for a fashion sale. As you can see on your screen right now, this is where we got up to in the first part of our tutorial. We're now into the final part of our tutorial where we are going to be adding in the text down here as well as this little snippet of contact details at the bottom of the page. So let's start with this text here in the yellow section. We've got clothing, footwear and accessories that we need to write in in black text. So go and grab your type tool. Change the color up the top to black. And I'm going to just change my font from Arial Regular here to Arial Bold. And I'm going to bump the size up to about 12 point. And in capital letters, I'm just going to write clothing, vertical line, which is just above the enter key. Um, what do we have? Clothing, footwear. Another vertical line and we had accessories. Now as you can see we've got a huge amount of tracking between the letters there. So if you hit that little folder at the top, change your tracking here back to I'll say a hundred. That should look alright. Okay, so clothing, footwear, and accessories. Doesn't matter where you put it for now, just stick it somewhere inside that yellow stripe. Now on the next line, we're going to be writing a discount up two. And if I just jump over to the example, you can see it says discount up two. Same font, just a bit bigger. So I might just copy and paste that. And I'll write in capital letters again, discount up two. And I'll highlight that. Now it's going to be a bit bigger. Um, I'm going to be guessing around 30 point. Yeah, probably work. And what's our tracking set at again? 100, yeah, it should be fine. So discount up to, actually, 30 is probably a bit big. Drop it down to about size 20. Yeah, that looks a bit nicer. I don't think we're going to have room if we leave it at size 30. So discount up to, uh, don't worry about where you put it too much for now, just somewhere below what we've already written. Now the next line, we're going to write 80%. So let's drag down, copy and paste again. 80%. Now this color is going to be that ready color that we've already used over in the backdrop here. And the size is going to be pretty big. Um, let's get it up to about, let's say, 90 point. And we'll change the tracking again to zero, I'm thinking. That'll just squish it together. Probably not enough, actually. We might change that tracking to minus 50. Yeah, that pushes the text together a bit. So discount up to 80%. And underneath that, what do we got on selected items? So let's just copy and paste that text again. We're in capitals. It's going to say on selected items. Now I don't want it bold. I'm going to drop it back to regular. Um, probably not as big either. So let's just drop that size down a bit. Maybe that size 15 will work. Okay. That's looking pretty good. One thing you can do to get these perfectly centered with each other is just highlight them all. So all that text there, I've just clicked and dragged over it. And at the top where you've got these funny little shapes, we click this second one in here. It says align horizontal centers. And that just gets them all perfectly centered um, with each other. What's coming in next? We've got this little funny shape. We could draw that, but the quick way to do it is use what we call a glyph. So in Photoshop, you need to go to your window menu and select a glyph. Glyphs are just little pictures here that you can um, use, or funny little symbols that you can use. We're going to change our font from Arial to Wingdings. So just scroll through your list and so you can see Wingdings. And in Wingdings, you'll see this shape here. Okay, if you actually might need to grab a text box first before we can put this in. Just grab a text box and click on your page. And double click on these little squiggly lines and you'll see that they appear on your page. Okay, I'll just hide the glyphs panel. We're going to make this a bit bigger. And we're going to change the color of them to that ready kind of color that we've got for the background. So just, um, I think you can grab your text tool and highlight it. Yep. Grab your color box up the top and select the red background. Now I want to get rid of one of these. And the way we do it is just go to our layers panel here. This is our text here. 
you would need to right click on it and I think we need to rasterize type that's going to allow us to delete this bottom section so just grab your rectangle mark key tool now click and drag over the bottom one simply press delete that will get rid of it you go to select and deselect that'll get rid of those little um, marching ants or the marquee and this squiggly line can just go straight in underneath that other text it's probably a little bit big what I've got there so I might make that a bit smaller it's kind of like a line break just separating that section of text with the one we're about to put in so the next thing I'm going to do is put in when it starts so it starts on the 20th of August and it's in store only so let's let's grab the type tool again and we'll write starts oops need to change my font back to Arial Uh, we're going to use Arial Bold for this one, by the way. So Arial Bold will be good. Uh, when did I say it was going to start? Starts 20th of August. And I want my font to go back to black. And then on the next line, we're going to say in store only using just your plain Arial font. So just change that from bold to regular. Say in store. I should spell store properly. In store only. And that's all the text for that section. So it's a bit tedious, but what I'm going to do now is just highlight it all and center align them. And I might just nudge that around a little bit so they look like they're roughly in the center. That yellow section doesn't look too bad. If you want, you can space them out a bit. If we zoom, zoom back a bit. Actually, we don't want to space them out because I just remember we have to put that white strip at the bottom. So what we want to do is actually bring them a bit closer together. That looks pretty good. And I'll just nudge it up now using my arrow keys into a reasonably good position. Probably somewhere around there will look good. Okay, so zooming back to full screen, that's not too bad at all. So what I want to put in now is this white strip at the bottom with the contact details for the business. So to do that, we're going to need to get our rectangle tool and just set the color, which is the fill color at the top, to white. And simply draw down the bottom a white rectangle. If you go outside the lines a bit, that won't hurt. That's what I'm going to do. Okay, so we've got the white rectangle at the bottom. Might be a good idea to lock that layer too, so we can't move it around accidentally. Might even rename it to white strip so I know what it is. Always good practice to rename your layers. I haven't been doing it too much in this um, tutorial, but always good practice to rename your layers so it's easy to work out what's what. Now with this white strip that's in, um, actually I'm just going to make it a wee bit bigger. Out there. Okay, that looks good. I'll lock it again. Now with this white strip, we're going to put our contact details on top of it here. And this is where the little icons will come in handy. So remember we downloaded these icons before? I'm going to bring all three of them in at once by highlighting them and simply dragging them over to Photoshop and dropping them in. They're going to come up one by one. If you just press tick, tick, and tick, it will put all three of them on top of each other. That's fine. What we're going to do is we're going to select these three layers. Um, we should be able to do it by just clicking and dragging over the top of them. Yeah, it's got them. And we're going to resize them all together. So just hold Shift and use your Move tool to resize them. I know it looks like a jumbled mess with them all on top of each other at the moment. But that's okay. We're still resizing. Fairly small. Probably something around that size. Press the tick when you're done, and then you can start divvying them up. So we want the um, phone in the middle, I think it was. Quite hard to move around. You've got to actually click on the black line to pick it up and move it around. Uh, the www goes to the right-hand side, and the little address symbol on the left-hand side. We'll get them into position in a minute, because before that, I, whoops, I want to get these little triangle patterns in, down in the corners. Okay, so all we need to do there is just grab one of the ones we've already done, duplicate it, bring it down into the corner. Now it's hiding behind that white strip, so what I'm going to do is move that white strip down a bit lower. Down about there. Okay, now I can see this 
red triangle that I put in. So I'm going to make that a bit bigger. What have I done with this one? I've got the red one and then the yellow one behind it. So let's just bring over a yellow one. That looks like it's going to go behind it nicely. Something like that in the bottom corner will look good. And once you've got that in, we're going to do the same on the other corner, but we're going to switch them around. So I'm going to highlight both of them, duplicate them. You can either copy and paste them, or like I'm doing, just hold Alt and drag them across. Now I want the yellow guy to come up in front of that red rectangle, uh, red triangle this time. I don't know why I keep saying rectangle. There we go. So the yellow is going to go on the left on the inside, and the red on the right. So I'll just move that over. Move that over. That looks, yeah, that looks pretty good. So that's pretty similar to what we've got in the example. So now we just need to whack in these contact details. Let's just get these evenly spread out first. We might highlight them. Press this button here horizontally up. Oh, wrong one. Vertically along the centers. That's what I want to do. Hit these little dots. I think you can distribute them horizontally too. Distribute spacing. That might be worthy as well. There we go, That's pretty evenly spaced out. And if we have a look, you can see the icons are red, the text is black. So we'll put the text in first and then we'll change those icons to red and we should be done. So the first is the address, 120 Summit Road, Pomona. So grab your type tool, change the color. Actually, color's already black, so that's fine. It's the font that we want to change from Arial Regular to Arial Narrow. And I might drop that size down a bit to 12 point. I think we're all good to go there. Okay, 120. Actually, uh, did we have it in capitals? No, we didn't have it in capitals. Summit Road, Pomona, Queensland, 4568. That is our address. Make sure it is left aligned. And you can go and move that over next to that icon. Now, just duplicating that text, we'll go and put in a phone number. You can make one up, so 0412345678. Easy, just move it down a bit if you can. And finally, the website. So, again, we're making one up here. It's www.valentino.com.au. Now, that doesn't fit. So, we're going to have to do a little bit of rearranging here to make it fit. What I'm going to do is actually resize this whole bottom section of text and the symbols a little bit big for my liking, so I'm just going to bring them down to a more suitable size like so. Now they're probably a little bit low now, I just need to nudge them up with my arrow keys. Looks a bit better. There we go. So the last thing I want to do, as I said before, is change the color of these icons. Unfortunately, I have to do it individually. So here's the phone icon layer. Just double click on it. And if you go to color overlay, you can select that ready colored background. Click OK. Uh, we've got the address icon that we're going to do the same for. So go to color overlay, whack him in. And then for the www, uh, which is the web icon, we will put a color overlay on to it. Click OK. I think we're done. Let's zoom back and have a bit of a look at our flyer. That's not too bad at all. I think this text here is still a little bit lopsided. I guess that's the design we've gone for though. It's a little bit asymmetrical, but yeah, it's not too bad. Just nudge it around a little bit until you're happy with it. I think that looks pretty cool. Um, so when you are finished, I would hit File and Save first of all, and just save it as a Photoshop document or a PSD file. But if you are fully happy with it, and you've got no more changes that you want to make, go up to File, and choose Export, and then Export As. Now this always takes a little while on my computer, it's a bit slow, but a box is going to pop up in a moment asking you what file type you want to export it as. What I'm going to choose is JPG, it's pronounced JPEG. Since we've got some high quality photos in there, it's a good idea to use JPEG for that option. Uh, you can leave the quality at 100%. You might want to drop it a tiny bit just to save some file space, but it's only going to be about 1.8 megabytes, which isn't too big in size. Um, where it says color space convert to sRGB, I don't check that box, so it stays in CMYK color mode. 
you don't have to understand all that by the way that's just me talking a bit of um, graphic design talk click on export it'll ask where you want to save it um, so I'm just going to call this fashion add and click save and that'll just take a moment but that will save or export basically to your computer as a JPEG file and that would be ready for high quality print now uh, if I just jump onto my desktop here where did I save that to actually I'll come over here to my desktop oh I must have saved it in another another location my bad anyway you get the idea it is saved on my computer there somewhere as a jpeg file so that's all i'm going to show you in this video um hopefully yours turned out just as good feel free to change the colors up if you would like you don't have to stick with that red and yellow color scheme i just thought it went well with those photos but feel free to do your own color scheme and use your own photos if you would like for your design okay i'll catch you in the next video